drum circles. And uh, you just don't meet many people who have been on stage with the Grateful Dead. And with this, just it's such a wide range <laughs> musically, but uh, Janelle is one of those people who has. And uh, such an adventurous spirit and such a fierce um, devotion to uh, the full expression of what it means to be human. And she does it with amazing tools, which uh, you will know not only get to hear, but you can come up and play with, I'm pretty sure. She's going to encourage you to do that. So very experiential. Drumming is um, one of the oldest tools, probably the oldest tool in our, as a human species, uh, for communication and for um, community making. So. I'll turn it over to the expert. You know, it's great to see you. Great wow, so nice to be here. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Charlie, for having me. Thank you all for coming. What a, a special place you have here. Um, I am, my name is Janelle Burdell, and I'm a professional drummer. Uh, drum set is my main instrument. And yes, I've played with everybody from Disney to the Dead and from Broadway to Tupac. I've done a lot of different things. Um, I've made sounds for synthesizers and uh, wonderful, wonderful experiences along the way, things I couldn't have imagined. I grew up in Braddock, Pennsylvania, so a really rough neighborhood. Um, I've traveled all over. Why am I back here? I'm back here to meet you all, <laughs> really. Um, I started, how, where do I even begin? When I started as a child here to be that professional drummer, I surely started out with um, my own young ego involved, wanting to be this young woman, to do something in a man's world, very much a masculine uh, feel, still to this day. Never would I have dreamed in a million years that that journey of walking step by step, uh, like he was sharing, you know, we bring each other we bring things to each other and never imagining that journey would have taken me to a place where I was a have been able to create and connect in ways to use this very self-oriented pleasure to be able to help myself to change, heal myself, and to also give that gift to others. Um, at a time when I believe it's probably the very, uh, at a time when it's very timely to do this. Um, I started out very, like I said, self-centered around it, wanting to be the best. And of course, my journey led to a job out in California. And I was playing with an eclectic group called the Cuckoo. They were all women. They were all electronic. And they were based in a multimedia platform which of course at that point in time in the 90s was unheard of. What is multimedia? And we were just developing it all. At that time, they started doing uh, entertainment events that included this idea of a drum circle at the live event. And I couldn't imagine what they were doing, why they were doing this. What are you talking about a drum circle? What is this idea of everyone just novices coming together and banging on things? and what, we train our whole lives to be excellent at what we do and, and, and tight and proficient. How could you possibly put me in this chaos that's going to ensue? You know? And they said, oh, don't worry about it. They said, Arthur will be there. And I said, Arthur? Who's Arthur? He said, Arthur Hall. Little did I know that Arthur Hall, and if any of you have experimented or heard of any of this drumming movement, He's definitely the grandfather and godfather of it all. He's a wonderful uh, man and, and musician and drummer who has developed the art of giving the gift of rhythm and connecting people with their own rhythm in mass. So it's a different thing than doing a one-on-one -on -one thing. So they had basically what he did was he had, they had Arthur Hall in the audience and we played on stage. And what ensued was not chaos, but magic. That day changed my life. I saw people hanging off of rafters, playing glasses. We were all one. And somehow, 
we were all playing beyond what we could all play individually. There was something bigger happening that was significant. So I continued walking, and I ended up from that job working with Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead, who's a drummer for the Grateful Dead. And at that time, he was um, starting to fund a lot of the research with Remo, a company and a man who makes drums and drum, drum heads. And they started working with, uh, at, Baba Tunde announced that they were going to start this work. And Baba Tunde is a great legendary drummer from Africa. And he had announced at a press conference that I played at that he would like to see a drum in every home. A drum in every home. And I thought, well, that would be wonderful. That would really change everything, wouldn't it? How did I know this? Because of this prior experience. When I had witnessed through this powerful magic, I thought, well, that's an interesting concept. Mental note. That's all I did. That changed my life, though. From that point on, I got involved with Mickey, and he was involved with the funding of Dr. Barry Bittman out in Meadville, uh, along with Remo, to research drumming and healing, rhythm and healing. And what they started coming up, and I'm going to nutshell, I'm going to paraphrase wildly, was that 20 minutes of this motion, which is bilateral, even through my own little research that I've done on my own, um, I know that that connects a lot with orthodontics and the, you know, prior to chiropractic orthodontics. And, and 20 minutes of this motion will increase your cancer-fighting cells and NK, that's right, activity cells, uh, cancer-fighting cells, and your, build your, boost your immune system. So there's something about this. This is the way we walk, bilateral, right? We swing our arms this way, right? So if you want to, therefore, in the middle of winter when you're feeling blue and you want to feel better, go take a walk and swing your arms. Don't forget to swing your arms. Very important. The swinging of the arms creates a well-being, just a general sense of well-being. You're fighting, you're going to go take a walk, right? I'm getting out of here, I'm going to go take a walk. Part of it is getting away, but part of it is that walk, is that motion that just, I believe, just harmonizes all the many different functions and systems in your body. As a drummer, we learn that early on. We start by doing this. Right, 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 hundred years. Right, left, 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 right? It's a constant, consistent, basic kind of training of right and left and right and left. So very early on, I started feeling as a young girl that I was able to, quite frankly, monitor and control my own mind in a in a positive way. If I started to get blue, I could go drum, and I felt better. That part of it was doing something I loved, but there was also this motion involved, I realize now, right? So, OK, I'm, I'm a little nervous. i got to say I'm not on stage, right? <laughs> I am on stage, but it's not my field of expertise. I have 30 years uh, doing what I do, and I'm sure you have as many in your own fields doing what you do. I don't claim to be here, please. I don't claim to be uh, a doctor by any means. Um, but I have witnessed amazing things, and I'm here to share that with you. I believe that the power of the future of healing and medicine is in the collaboration of modalities, the collaboration of, of energies. Um, that's why I love what you're doing here, Dr. Chinnery, um, as well as Bill Bittman with his H HCN network idea that we will eventually lose the buildings of the hospitals per se. It will come to more of a network of people that will come to help smaller groups of people. Um, I could never offer what you offer as therapists, but I can offer something that can help you as therapists. They can help you like pouring gas onto what your goal is, gasoline. It's magic. 
this thing of drumming, this act of drumming, when you do it for 20 minutes, yes, your cancer cells are, uh, fighting cells are boosted. Yes, your immune cells are boosted. These neuroendocrine, I'm sure you're all specialists in this, um, and I could get you all the information for you. I tried to memorize it, but I failed in my attempt last night. Because you're getting off the plane, like, okay, how am I going to pull this off? <laughs> you got to remember, this is like the earliest she's been up in probably right. 20 and years. So it's well, a different years. cycle for musicians. But, but I did say to him, I'm not going to be able to be prepared. He's like, it's really informal. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, there's an amazing thing that happens when you do this. There's an opening that happens. Does anybody play music in here? Has anyone played music? Do you, you all enjoy music. Mm -hmm. All different types of music. You surely know what happens to you when you listen to music, how your body responds. You relax. You relax. You breathe deeper. Right? It, it starts to work with your body. Okay, one of the things that I learned with uh, Planet Drum, at Planet Drum, working with Mick Pihar and all the masters from around the world, Zakir Hussain and Giovanni Hidalgo, Baba Tunde, they didn't speak the same language, but they did. They spoke music, and they spoke rhythm. And they believed, and they taught me with everything that I know, I believe this, we are rhythm beings, we live in a rhythm world. We are vibrational beings. We live in a vibrational world. We are rhythm beings. We live in a rhythm world. Think about that. We are rhythm beings. We live in a rhythm world. We don't think on those terms. We walk through our lives very differently, but that is what we are. right? There are three classifications of rhythm I learned from them, and I share. Rhythms of nature, which, of course, we could talk about. Just yell out. For the instance, seasons. the seasons. Did someone? Yeah, the seasons. Here we are at fall, one of my favorite, coming into fall, right? So we have fall, winter to spring. Thank goodness it's not winter to fall. And we have to go through it again. It's winter will turn to spring every time, even in Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe these past few winters have been very hard here for me. I'm from here. I've been startled by the depth of cold that I've felt <laughs> the past couple of winters, right? So that kind of winter will turn to spring. There are, there are these rhythms that are happening no matter what, whether you believe in them or not. They're happening. They're in nature. Yes, it revolves around the fact that we all orbit around this incredible sun. Day to night, we know the next day is going to come. More than likely, hopefully for all of us. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so more tonight. So the rhythms of nature are very, very important. Um, another rhythm of nature would be the tides. Right? Again, connected to the planets. But if you went to the beach every day, you were pulling your towel up a little bit further, one hour earlier. Clockwork. It works like that. Whether you believe in it or not, it works like that. Right? So there's the rhythms of nature. The rhythms of the body was the second classification that they talked about. Need we say the number one drum in our world is our heart. When that rhythm stops, life as we know it changes. <clears throat> changes. So that is the number one rhythm. And it works hand in hand with the number two rhythm, which is our breath. So again, they're working clockwork, thank goodness I don't have to think about that, <laughs> you know, because I'm sure I forget it from time to time. <laughs> so that's working. Another great way of rhythms in the body, I mean, of course, being women, we all know every 28 days, we have the rhythm of life cycle pulsing through us, you know. It's an amazing, amazing thing, and it's clockwork. Being a, uh, being a woman, I've played in all women bands, and I can tell you, uh, it's challenging. <laughs> it's challenging, <laughs> not for the normal reasons, mainly for that rhythm of nature that I'm talking about, right? Why? Because, well, what will happen is we're pack animals, and we are mammals, and we will align to that alpha dog rhythm more, than, more times than enough. Even though I was supposed to have that cycle two weeks earlier, it would come. And I would be like, what's going on? We would all align to the alpha in the group. Wow. 
there's rhythm working here in our bodies in a unique way, right? Rhythms of nature, or rhythms in the body. The other one I think of, which is really profound, is even the rhythms from our brain, the signals being sent to our muscles, the synapses. Um, surely, if they weren't working, I couldn't do what I do. We all couldn't do what we do. And I think when they do have, have when there is, when they do come out of harmony with each other, dis-ease. So when these rhythms of the body come out of alignment with each other, you get dis-ease. When they're in alignment, you have ease. And, uh, you know, that's been really profound. So we have rhythms of, of nature, rhythms of the body, and I'm sure we'll think of some more of those. You probably know about five or ten more of those, each one of you. And then rhythms of uh, culture, which are rhythms that we make. Your psychiatric rounds is a rhythm once a month. You've collectively committed to join your energies and come together and do this psychiatric round. One of the rhythms of uh, culture that I think of that's most common is traffic. We make it. You know you're going to get across the street, but you have to watch. You know you're going to get across the street, but you have to watch before you cross. And then boom, you can get across, right? We're doing it collectively. One of the best uh, icebreakers I use, with kids especially, but I could do it with all of you, what do you, do, and we won't do it, but think about it, what do you do from the time you get up out of bed to the time you leave for school or for work? You get up on the one side of the bed. I bet you it's the same side every day. Almost. That's how rhythmically we are. You go, and what do you do? Think about it. I go into the bathroom, go to the bathroom, I wash my face, I brush my teeth, I go make coffee. Look, you're all laughing because you all have your own rhythm and you know it. And you could go like this, boom, you could shut your eyes. And I did this morning and did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And I remember to make how to make the coffee. But you know what I'm saying? There is a rhythm of culture <laughs> we make, excuse me. <laughs> and you also, excuse me, make it in your family, in your household. So some of you might like to shower in the morning. Some of you might like to shower at night. If dad's showering in the morning, maybe I need to shower at night or whatever, my brother or sister or whoever, right? So it's starting to be mindful <clears throat> of all those things uh, really changes your world. And I teach... Rhythm awareness, basically, how to connect with your own rhythm and rhythm awareness because I believe it will help you live a happier, healthier life. I also believe it can help you live a happier health with a happier, healthier mind. I think that this, in the past year, year and a half, I have gotten really aggressive with bringing these programs out. To people with all the shooting and gun violence and mass violence that's happening in the past year and a half or so, it's off the chains, right? We we aren't teaching our kids how to take care of their minds. We're not teaching them. We're not teaching people how to take care of their own minds, you know. And drumming is a simple entertainment vehicle that has profound effect in that direction. Drumming in a group, even more so. A lot of Barry Bittman's research has to do with this boost of immune cells and cancer-fighting cells. They all had, they found out that their protocol worked, worked on a single session. They were able to boost, they got increased activity. On your first time drumming, you don't even know how to drum, and you're going to get those benefits just by doing this act, because it's so natural to us. It's such a natural setup for us. The circle, I can't talk to you about how much I love the circle. The circle is the way that we first started to meet as, a, as people, right? We were nomadic until then. This is the way we came together to govern, to celebrate life, to celebrate death. We met in a circle. Why is the circle so wonderful? Because everybody can be seen and heard equally. 
It's easily expandable to include more people. Love that. If it's too big, we can close it, make it closer too, right? But it's just the best setup. Do I think that teachers should teach in a circle? Absolutely. I think the classroom setup is faulty. <laughs> it's faulty. And it's, it's leading, it's setting itself the momentum towards these we could help promote it in different ways, just by a little subtle change like this, right? Um, so I was very impressed by that, Doctor. I gotta say, I, I love the whole idea of the circle and the rounds and the special space to come meet, the place in nature, to connect with nature, to hear the rhythms of the bird songs, to hear the songs. Do you hear them out here? You must. The the uh, this summer, the humidity has brought such a, um, a massive amount of crickets and things. Have you heard that at night? Mm -hmm. To the songs, right? There's all this rhythm and singing and music happening around us all the time. But life has gotten very busy, very busy. Hobbies are no more. When I was a child, they talked about hobbies. I'm like, what's that? Right? If it doesn't make money in two years, you're not doing it. Right? In this day and age, right now, it doesn't matter how, it's part of what I'm saying now boldly to educators, like at Franklin Regional, where we have a mass stabbing, right? Terrible tragedy. Um, boldly saying to these educators, we must go and we must try to find different ways to reach these kids and give these kids different outlets, right? Um, I got a little bit distracted there, but. But that's the idea. So I've been boldly saying to everybody, going up to educators, saying, look, it doesn't matter. It's tough times right now. It doesn't matter how much money you're making for the tape or how much sex you're getting. It's not enough, right? And I look, and these grown men will look at me, but they kind of know that I'm right. They kind of know that that's what we have on the table, at least. Do you see what I mean? That that's what we're dealing with. It's tough. Financially, it's tough right now. It's really rough. Like I said, we've got us living up to beyond our means. It's, it's the culture, the rhythms of culture, the way they've got us spending, the way they've got us living, right? How do you step away and create and be to your own drama? How do you create a new life? You're all dealing with people with mental um, uh, challenges that could affect their daily life and does affect their daily life, uh, does affect their families. How, when you're taking the slide, and we've all been there, I think maybe Robin Williams' death was such a clear marker and um, message to us all of how subtle, subtle depression and how widespread depression is in our culture today. You know, boldly. I think we'd say, oh yeah, we were depressed and and you could get yourself out of it. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it when you're taking the slide? How do you tell a drug addict who's used to doing that? Talk about a rhythm. They get up every day and they want to do something the same way, right? How do you do that? You have to interrupt it. You have to give them ways to interrupt that. A lot of what you work with are ways that involve the language, correct? Talking, from what I understand, <clears throat> my limited understanding, doctor. I'm, you know, humbled to be here by everyone's ah, experience. You know, I really am humbled with that. And I'm, I move because I know that what I have to offer could help and does help. Um, so now, can, you, when, can you tell us about what happened at Franklin Regional and Brandon? Sure. Franklin Regional was an interesting thing. They did not want us to come in with uh, the idea that it was therapy. The principal wanted it to be as normal as possible. My quote to the music director was, what was normal about your last, what was so normal about the last day that you saw up there? Really. There was nothing normal about that day. My, my request was to throw, if I were to go in there, you're cleaning up the blood off the walls. You can't raise the vibration. There was so much fear in that building. I had heard through teachers in the area that they had students that felt guilty because they saw something go down 
and they didn't say anything. They saw it happening. They couldn't bear to stop it. They were scared. They were scared. How do you change that? I said I'd throw a carnival in those halls. I put so much music and joy in those halls that you just couldn't resist it. Really raise the vibration in those halls. So what we did was a brilliant idea by the uh, choir director, Chris Rust, was that he decided to have it across lunch periods, open lunch. I'd like to propose this across the country. Open lunch, put drummers to work, bring them drums into the auditorium. Anybody who wants to come drum could drum. Groups of people who had never met each other came and drum. Many of them went, left, and ate lunch. Many of those kids came back because they felt the change in them. They felt good. And they went down and told their friends, hey, you got to come drum. you got to come drum. That's happened on every occasion. When I do a women's drum circle, they'll start out with their polyester suits, purses over their shoulders, playing like this. <laughs> In three hours, they're unbuttoned. <laughs> and the next month, they're dressed differently, saying, Marge, you've got to come drum. <laughs> This is the kind of change we're talking about. This is the kind of change we need. We need it to be big, we need it to be fast, we need it to be dynamic, and we need it to stick. Right? And that's what we're all hoping for in our work. You're with your work, and I don't know your individual work. I'm sure it's wonderful. And I hope to meet you all and talk with you all individually and get to know more about it. Um, but I do know that those principles are true. You know, we need fast change right now. So I feel like I'm the Pied Piper of the drum and the Udu. Just throwing it out there everywhere I can. Get drums into their hands. Get drums into their hands. Why? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's all these, but all these other benefits happen. And you can't stop it. Remember back to the first part? Whether you believe it or not, like gravity, if you stop, or the sun, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. You can't stop it. You can't help yourself. I go and take drums into uh, not even at risk use gangsters. At the end, they're cooperating and smiling, and the authorities are going, what are you doing? <laughs> Part of it is that I meet them, and I'm sure from hearing you talk, it's with this premise that all of your people work. You meet them believing in them. Mm -hmm. You believe in them. I believe in them. Those authorities don't necessarily believe that they have one ounce of good in them. I know they have a diamond in them, like we all do. Whether we polish it or not is what we do every day with our daily practice, however that is. you know. Um, so I believe in them, and I'm able to make that, create that change. Part of it is this, just the, the act of this is happening, right? So boom, they can't resist it. They can't resist the change. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we're looking for? Here's the ultimate and the last thing, and then we're going to get you guys from in a little bit. I appreciate your time. Um, you know, we are hoping for this fast change, and um, gosh, I'm getting a little distracted here. I'm so sorry. It's the morning hours. I, I told you coffee. I didn't even bring coffee. Right? I said, put the coffee on, Sven. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get that coffee. Don't tell her Dr. Chaudhry doesn't believe in coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I saved myself for this. What I'm hoping to do is give you guys alternatives and uh, ways. I've worked with, um, I've been brought into the women's shelters and the homeless. Children's Fund has brought me in there, and that's been wonderful because they've never had programs that have worked with moms and children. I'm insisting that the moms come. Why? Because women rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the world to change, the women are raising the children. If you want the world to change, you've got to get there. You've got to start there. Yeah, take my kids too. <laughs> we've, got, we've got to start there with the moms and the children. So, so besides just having the children drum and inviting the moms, so we've been able to make great progress. After the first first session, everybody hands down says all the behavioral problems are gone. I don't understand. 
they're gone. His kids are eating out of, they'll do anything you want. <laughs> right? Okay. Second thing they say with the moms and children, wow, I'm seeing new communication opening up between the moms and the children where there was only abuse prior. That's profound. Now they're bringing me back for six and eight sessions to work with these moms. A lot of these moms are recovering drug addicts. Now these moms are coming back to see me beyond the kids because they get what we were just talking about. It feels good. It lingers. It lingers for a couple of hours after you do this drumming and you're all open. My programs, after we do this drumming, I would love to have one of you there, and those are the type of programs I create where I work with the counselor to then have the dialogue ensue after the drumming. If NATO would do that, we would have a different world. If they drummed, it's a simple thing. If they drummed, it's so simple. I'm telling you the conversation would be radically different. I know it with every bone in my body. We're going to get Putin drum. Right? <laughs> and he couldn't resist it. Do you see what I'm saying? If everyone else was doing that, he'd have to. <laughs> it's, it's, it's guaranteed to work. You know, it's a small entertainment vehicle that carries a whole <coughs> bunch of good. So my Rhythm Games, I started a project called Rhythm Games, nonprofit project, that uses drumming and the drum circle. I think that that's very important that we come together in this form to empower for entertainment, for wellness, for personal and social change. My life has changed because of this work. I didn't set out to do this work. I didn't set out to meet and talk with doctors who had more information than I and say, gosh, I think we could do really great things together. I think we could change the world. You know, and I know it. You know, I really believe it. Because I've seen amazing things in kids and people, adults, autistic children, a little bit tougher with the drums because of the too much input, right? The volume. Drums are loud. Drums are loud. They're great. They, you get out aggression. It's a loud sound. Wonderful for girls who have been trained their whole life to, to be small, to not be heard, right? It's empowering. I prefer. If I'm working specifically for a goal, to separate by gender for that reason. It's a matter of feathers, guys. It's the old, when men and women are in the same room, the men's feathers are going to come out, like the bird, right? Beautiful, but I don't need the girls cowering back at the same time. So how to create that kind of a space where both can be empowered? The drum circle gives you that really great uh, ability. <laughs> for artistic kids, there's one out of five boys being born in Allegheny County, someone told me, that are artistic. That's a really high ratio. <laughs> Whatever it's caused by, we could go into long dialogue about that. I'm not concerned about that. That's why I didn't go back to Duquesne University for my music therapy degree, which doesn't include this work yet in the degree. Why? Because I'm like Florence Nightingale. We have soldiers on the ground suffering. We have people suffering. Get the drums in their hands. That's all I care about because I know it will work. Yes, I'd love to learn more. I love the fact that I'm learning and can, will continue to learn through all of you individually uh, and collectively. Um, but I think that, that we need to keep doing that and joining effort here to to achieve our goals, right? The autistic kids, the volume of the drums is too much for many of them. Have you worked with autistic kids? No, I was just, my son plays um, the drums also, but I was just thinking for them, what about just the basic practice drum pad? Pads um, work also, it. pads work also, it's an amazing right. thing. There are softer sounds. I, I had a great benefit, I work with electronics. I built Mickey Hart Toll electronically. And I work with electronics. They do really well with that. Why? Because there's a focused sound source that you can control the volume, right? They love it. 
he came back every week. He knew exactly where to go. He wanted to hit the same pads. He wanted to do the same thing, get the same sound. And it wasn't a normal sound. It was gongs from Tibet. And he would blow a didgeridoo, which sounds like monks chanting, right? I said to his mother, has he ever heard the Tibetan monks or have you played anything like that? No, never. Okay, interesting. He sure knew that sound. He came in and created it himself every day. What he did was also he loved, he loved the udu. And this is what I'm going to share with you. Most drums are abrasive. They're membranophones. So when you hit a drum, it's loud. And the sound comes out at you. Right? And you sort of are taken aback, like, wow, drums. <laughs> you know? It doesn't matter what kind of drum, even if it's a djembe, wow, it, it pushes you literally back. This sound is very different. This is the udu, and this shows we are rhythm beings. It's a clay pot from Nigeria. We are a rhythm beings, who, and we will play anything. Every culture has a clay pot. In India, it's the guitar. And it's shaped a little differently, but basically we'll play anything. We're musical, we're rhythm beings, and we want to. This one, folklore has it that someone dropped it, and a second hole was formed. It gives a certain pitch to it. than the drum, which comes at you, right? This teaches new listening, you know, new ways of listening. We need to teach new ways of listening. Uh, the third year talks about uh, the eyes only seeing one, one octave in the realm. Uh, one octave. On the piano, you have many octaves. You know what an octave? C, D, E, F, G, F, all the way to C, and then you go into another octave. And that is math, actually. It will spread out. And so in hearing, you hear 10 octaves. You're able to hear, the ear is able to hear 10 octaves, but the eye is only able to see one. See how much of the world we're missing. Because we're definitely a culture based visually, a visually based culture. Right? We're missing so much of life. Right? So much of life. I think that bringing these kind of methods into everything from training cops to training teachers would heighten the ability and the intuitiveness that as musicians we're given that gift to develop. We're intuitive. We listen a lot. That's what we do, you know? Um, we don't communicate through the same means all the time, right? These are different variations of voodoo. And I'm going to have all of you come up and do it. But first, I'm going to do a little exercise with you all, if you don't mind, and get you shaking and joining in. One of the, um, I know they're like, oh shoot, I had to participate. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chadwick didn't tell me that. Right? 
Um, if you don't mind, stand up for a minute. Thank you all for doing this. I'm going to show you a very simple thing. This is a professional way to learn how to play a shaker, but it's also a way to connect your brain to your muscle, which are these rhythms of, and synapses we want to improve, especially with people with Parkinson's. Um, I'm working with a former teacher right now who has Parkinson's, and um, we've noticed that some of his symptoms are definitely calming, definitely subside when he's in train with me. What do I mean by entrainment? After 20 minutes of this motion, of doing something with anybody, you entrain, rhythms lock together. So for instance, two hearts beat as one. It was an experiment back in the 1600s with pendulums. Eventually the balls would sink. The rhythms will sink. So eventually, people do sink. A family sinks together. So I call it sink, but aligns or grooves, whatever, right? Um, very simple. So when I, we entrained with the gentleman with Parkinson's, his mo motion subsided. All the symptoms were eased, were at ease, you know? Okay, we're going to do this again, he said. Yes, I'd love to do it again. Great. So here's the, the exercise. Make a fist like you're going to punch yourself in the nose. Don't do it, Sven. I know you want to. Sometimes we all want to. Right? Okay? And then you're going to go up and out and down and out. I know it's an odd motion. That's why it's so good for your brain to do it. Up and out and down and out. If a person was in a wheelchair, I would have them do it. I would put a plate right there, a paper plate, and have them hit it. And they, too, could play. Anybody can play. We all have it up and out, down and out, up and out, down and out, up and out, down and out. Fantastic. You're all wonderful. You get your first choice. Close your eyes, doctor. Reach in the bag and pull it out. Oh. It, what, is, what did you get? A, 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 a plum. A lemon. Okay. Another plum. We might need to get to the eggs by we get, when we get to you. I didn't expect such a great crowd. <laughs> Look at you. You're all right away. You want us to go up and out of the oven. It's so great. Let me get some more eggs for you guys. I have some more. Wait, the fruit is over here. We've got Carmen Miranda. Okay. Okay. And then, Ben has me coming back uh, later this month. I'm going to bring a whole bunch more drums, and we're going to really have some fun. That's for our celebration of success. <laughs> Isn't that coming up? Yeah, the 19th. Right? Give an egg. Give an egg. Shake it like the wind. Shake it like the wind. 
Right? That's a good boy. I want to see. Why am I taking my round? So, you see, sounds imitate life. It's all connected. This is an incredible tool. An incredible tool for all of you. Add some wood into that. Up and out, down and out. Up and out, down and out. Yeah. Hit the up. This is that. come in, right? Boom. You start to hear them and listen. You're able to shift your focus. It's an amazing teacher, an amazing tool. I have a few more Udus. I'd love to get you all playing these Udus. I don't know what your timing is like. I know it's 10 o'clock. I'm trying to be mindful. Um, I can't thank you all enough for this experience. It's been really challenging. It's been this hour. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I promise to come back and do better in the afternoon. <laughs> we usually work till about two or three or sometimes four, but it can get a little gnarly. Um, everyone thinks it's a glamorous life, even those video shoots are up at four o'clock in the morning, right? These are wonderful instruments. They're handmade clay pots by Frank Giorgini. And uh, some of them are manufactured by LP, and you can see he's made them. He, there is one actually, and you can all sit down. I'm so sorry. There was there is a an Udu in MoMA, MoMA Modern Art, a big one, and you play the paddle. And um, he then devised because drummer said, "Oh, this is wonderful, Frank, but could you create something that used both techniques, like I play bata or conga or whatever?" And so he came up with different ones, like for instance, the Mboate. Right? And then this one has a little... <laughs> <laughs> And that's what's so wonderful. So I've used this with women. I've been asked to use it in, in, with, uh, uh, even with birthing. You know, I've uh, gotten a call recently by a woman who works in hospice. Why? Because it's so soft sounding and soothing. Right? It's so inviting. It calms you. They say in Nigeria that the women used to play it. It was traditionally played by women in Nigeria. Of course, anything that women do together, like I said, since we rule the world, <laughs> is considered a secret society. When the missionaries came over, the first thing they did was take those drums away, right? And that's exactly what they did. So we don't know any of the traditional rhythms that were played, but we do know, I've talked to some of those women, that it was used, it means soothing. And it was used to go with the woman's voice. We imagine they got together and just shared stories. You know, just shared stories and shared their troubles. That's what happens here in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. The kitchen is where it would happen. I mean, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> The kitchen is where everything happens. <laughs> <laughs> right? I love it. <laughs> you know, I get it. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> everything happens there. Actually, I'm involved with a school called the, called the Institute for the Musical Arts. And it's a school geared for women and women in music and women in music related business. And it too is centered around the kitchen. And because we really believe that, uh, like I said, women will be a powerful force for, for creating the change that we all so desperately want to see in this world. Janelle, there used, to be, a, there used to be a bumper sticker in California that you would like. What's that? God is coming, and she is really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying she's coming. <laughs> <laughs> How would you 
Thank you.